altered states of consciousness in terms of moving, transcending beyond ourselves. It's gotten very strange and since the 60s in particular, but also since the this kind of growth in New Age shamanism, this new kind of a shamanistic idea that came about since the, the 90s. While uh, the idea of shamanism seems to have become a kind of a, a catch-all phrase of kinds, the idea of this uh, anyone can become a shaman, I don't know if that's necessarily true. I think that shamanism is ultimately a, a path of, of quite traumatic transcendence you know the idea that this is like you can go in a workshop and bang a few drums and pretend you're an animal and then become some shaman and then go back to the suburbs and continue on being in your shamanic path with your certificate i don't know if that works and uh, maybe in some individuals who have a natural inclination towards the the shamanist the idea of shamanism and particularly from the siberian aspect was all always a healing thing in terms of an emotional state we had that in Ireland, we had a thing called the fairy doctors and the fairy doctors used to be a basically a kind of shaman that would go around houses and cure people who had emotional problems. Like men, do we live in an age where mental health, neurological health dominates everything? But, you know, mental health's been around forever. It has always been. There's always been people who've had emotional, psychological issues. There's nothing new about this. What's new about it is the way we treat it. In the past, like these fairy doctors in Ireland, the Siberian shaman, the, the idea was to take the person and bring them out into another reality in order to find the root cause of the disruption. It could be something as, like, as basic as ca carrying a past life trauma. It could have been something they experienced as a childhood or some, or some other stage in our life. And this became a a kind of a pathological seed that it was entered into their consciousness and remained in their consciousness and continued like a kind of a feedback loop that caused them to slowly deteriorate and if it wasn't taken care of the actual trajectory of this person's life was debt now one of the most common reasons why a fairy doctor in ireland was called uh, to a house was a very a very unique social and a mental health issue that was very prevalent in rural Ireland up until probably the 1900s when more formalized versions of treating people came along in terms of asylums and stuff like that usually a male but not always but usually a male would lift up the slab the flooring slabs in the cottage pull them up and then bury themselves attempt to bury themselves alive under the floor of their own house now this is very significant from a Jungian point of view because within Jungian analysis the subconscious is represented by going below, by going into the basement of a, of a house, going into a cave under the ground. This is always a, this is always a kind of a, a default shamanic journey into the consciousness and often it happens during dreaming. We'll often have dreams about you know going under the ground, we'll have a dream about going into the earth. Would have a dream about going into the basement of a house this is to tell you there are issues with your subconscious that aren't being dealt with and this was how happening when these unfortunate young men were lifting up these slabs underneath their, their living rooms digging a hole and then filling in the soil on top of them the fairy doctor would be called over now the fairy doctors you know were legit because unlike the wise women of ireland i'm saying the wise women of ireland the witches were ill were you know were not the real thing they were but they were a bit more clever than these guys because the witches tended to uh, apply like you got in iberia and other countries like that in south america this brazilian portuguese kind of magic yeah they would incorporate uh, christian archetypes in order to charge that power force and so the witches got away with that the fairy doctors could come over and they would often uh, invoke what was called uh, you know a, a, a fairy it was an entity this you know they were taken in the power spirit of an entity and they would cure this person often just by uh, incantations now these were ruthlessly hunted down by both the church and by both the catholics and the protestants and by the court system or the legal systems at the time they were called and the medical in particular they were they were called all kinds of things you know for the usual things that they they throw at people who have a kind of a spiritual answer to problems you know frauds and all this kind of thing it was a uh, it was proven basically to work 
and it, they would discover that there was something in this young person's subconscious life that hadn't been addressed. They may have been sexually molested as children or, or basically had a bad experience or just difficult, having difficulty dealing with the world. And they, this, they would bring them back out and it was they would take them from the depths of the earth and bring them, restore them back to this reality. So basically, the the person who was undergoing this uh, this this emotional issue was altering into a, a a a altered state of consciousness, digging a hole under his house, and trying to get into his subconscious in a instinctual way to solve themselves, to fix themselves. The fairy doctor would come along and extract them out of that, but also at the same time uh, heal or resolve the issue, the underlying issue that put them to the state where they were trying to bury themselves alive. And you just think about how traumatic that was. We inadvertently, this is why we go alone, this is why we need time out. This is not us in our con. when we say things like I need time out to think about stuff. It's not your conscious mind that's thinking about stuff. It's your, sh your conscious mind is being shut down so your subconscious mind can find the actual problem, can deal with the actual issue. The hermit card in the in the tarot, the card number nine. Now it's, it's significant that it's a nine, it's a spiral. But the hermit is a kind of a shamanic journey. He's he's not he, he's going on a journey it doesn't mean he's actually left home or he's going someplace or he's going somewhere. What the hermit is doing is the hermit is going into a another state of consciousness in order to deal with the with the the aspects or the unresolved issues that lead, are needed towards social and personal maturity. This is why he holds a lantern. The lantern is the the inner star within everybody to show that that there is a magical potential, a a subconscious intelligence of the in the lower poles of the psyche that are actually guiding him on his path. It doesn't matter if he actually goes on a journey or not. And this is reflected so common. We see Odin in the Nordic tradition. Odin goes into into the underworld to the well to order, and he sacrifices his eye, one eye for wisdom and knowledge of the runes and the knowledge of the universe. This exchange of information, the sacrifice was the suffering, the suffering of the lost of eye. The sacrifice in the case of the fairy doctors was the young man's consciousness uh, and his, his, his cognitive, his cognitive, you know, structure, uh, it's the structure of his, of his cognitive processes had broken down. That was the sacrifice in order to go get him to resolve it. Now, it can all sound very romantic and very, in this day and age, oh, the shamanic journey, but these were traumatic things. The, the, the shamanic journey, I'd be the one that would be, be inclined to say, you don't really go on them unless you're at rock bottom.